Hey guys, it's Flatback Effects here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this parallax effect. So stick around, you're watching Flatback Effects. Welcome back to another tutorial, guys. And in this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at how to finish our parallax effect. So this is actually part two of a two-part tutorial. So in the first part, we looked at actually creating the landscape inside of Photoshop. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to put it all together to create this parallax effect. Now, for those of you that haven't done the first part, that's okay because I've put download links in the description below and you can get all the files that you'll need to create this effect. Now this parallax effect is actually a really common effect, primarily used in 2D and arcade style video games. But with a little bit of forward thinking, you can actually take this concept to the next level. Now in my latest showreel, I actually use this same technique for my character to be able to walk through the scene. I'm just gonna show you the basic building blocks you need to create this, and I'm really hoping you'll take and develop this effect yourself. All right, so let's get started. So for those of you that have done the first part, and you've created your landscape, the first thing we want to do is actually go back to Photoshop and we just really wanna quickly export our layers that we've created. So the way we do this is if you remember, we created folders. So if you turn off all of your layers except our sky layer, you then come up to file and you go to export. And what you need to do is you need to export it as a PNG. Now a PNG file will actually save that luma or the alpha values so it allows the parts that we can't see to essentially be see-through. So you export each layer, so you'd export one for your sky. We then turn that off and then we turn on our next layer, which would be our background. And we export that as a PNG. So you follow this same technique for each of your layers. So once you've done that, you can import those into your After Effects project. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna create a new composition. So I'm gonna call this one Forest, and I'm gonna set this one to be 1080 25, 1920 by 1080 and just make sure the duration's set to 10 seconds and then hit OK. Next, all I need to do is just simply drag all my layers into my composition. Next, I just need to order my layers. So I'm gonna keep the sky composition on the bottom. I'm then gonna drag my background layer, which is next, and then make sure my mid-ground and then my foreground is on top. Now at the moment, it's just a still image. So what we actually want to do is extend our landscape. So we do this by selecting all our layers, we're gonna make them 3D. And I'm gonna turn off all my layers except my sky. Then all I need to do with my sky layer selected, come up to edit, and then down to duplicate. All right, so next I'm gonna right click and create my camera. Now you can name this whatever you want. And I'm gonna set the preset to be 28 millimeters, and then just leave the rest and hit okay. Now, next we need to actually move the camera. So I come up to my camera tool, and we've actually got a few options here. Now you can click on those, otherwise you can hit C on the keyboard and that'll cycle through your different camera tools. So the tool we actually wanna use is this one with all the arrows pointing. And I'm simply gonna click and hold Shift at the same time. And I'm gonna move this off to the side so that we get about half of our screen there. Then with my top sky layer, the one that we duplicated, I'm simply just gonna drag this over until it lines up with the edge here. Next, I'm gonna turn on my background layer and I'm also gonna duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna come up to edit and down to duplicate. And this time I'm gonna select that layer and drag it over. Okay, so here's our first problem. So the two layers don't actually match up. Now a simple fix for this is just to come up to layer down to transform, and then just hit this, flip horizontally. So that's gonna make it line up exactly with the edge here. So you're essentially mirroring that layer. Now that's okay, but another option, if I just control Z that, is I can actually select my layer and simply just move it until it lines up with the edge. Now we've got this bit of a gap down the bottom, but that's okay, because we're not gonna see that the foreground is gonna cover that layer up. Next, I'm gonna grab my mid-ground layer and I'm gonna turn that on. And then I'm gonna come back up to edit and I'm gonna duplicate that layer. 
I'm going to hold shift and move this over. Now this one I'm just going to come up to layer, come down to transform, and then flip, and that's going to line up. Then I'm going to come to my foreground layer, so I'm going to come back up to edit, down to duplicate, and then I'm going to move this one across. Then I'm going to come up to layer again, down to transform, and then flip horizontally again, and that's going to line up. All right, now if we went back to our camera and we just move this, you can see already we've extended that landscape and it looks pretty good. Now, if you want to continue this on, you simply just keep duplicating those layers and moving them over and you can keep repositioning them like we've done to keep extending that background. Okay, so at the moment, you can see that all the layers are stuck together. Now, if you think about an object that's close to you and an object that's far away from you, and if you start to move side to side, the closest object to you is going to move faster than the distant object. So we have to replicate this inside of After Effects. Now, the way we do this is we actually switch this view here to two views, horizontal. Now, what we're actually seeing here on the left screen are all our layers. So imagine a piece of paper standing upright. Then we have our camera at the front and that's our angle of view. So what we're actually seeing, and then this is what we can actually, the camera can actually see, the active view. Now, what we need to do is we need to select our sky layers and move them into the distance. So we do this by selecting both the layers and I'm gonna move them back in Z space. So I need to click this blue arrow here and I simply just move them back. Now, how far back you move them just depends on how much of effect you want. So the further you move them, the less they'll move. And the further apart the objects, the more of that parallax effect you're gonna get. So once you've got them at a reasonable distance, we then hit S on the keyboard, and you can see that they've obviously shrunk because they've moved into the distance. And we need to actually scale these up. So I simply just scale them up until it fills the background again. Now this second layer has shifted around a bit. So we can just simply move that one off to the side and we can reposition that one later. Next, we're gonna grab our two background layers and we're gonna move them back to about there. And I'm gonna scale them up. And I'm using this as a height reference, basically. And I'm gonna shift this one over. Well, it roughly lines up with the edge again. We can fine tune that later. And then I'm gonna grab my mid-ground layer and I'm also gonna move that. And then scale this one up as well. All right, so we've got our sky layer, we've got our background layer, and then we've got our mid-ground layer and our foreground layer all evenly spread. Now, if I go back to my camera tool and move the camera, you can see straight away we've created that parallax effect. Now, when we get to here, we've got a little bit of adjustment to do. Now, this one's been squished, so I'm just gonna reposition this one and just move it over slightly, just till it lines up nicely. And I'm gonna grab this background layer as well, and I'm gonna move this one up and then just over as well. All right, so I'm just gonna reset my view now. Okay, so I brought my camera back to the far left. Next, I'm just gonna navigate down to the transform options for the camera, and I'm gonna create a keyframe for the point of interest and the position. I'm gonna move along about six seconds on the timeline, and I'm just gonna move the camera over, holding shift, until we get to the edge of our screen. So if I just play through that, we can see the effect working. Now that's a little bit fast, so I can just move these back to slow it down. Okay, and that looks good there. Okay, so that's the basic parallax effect. Now you can choose to use this exactly as it is, or you could add some extra bits in. So the other thing we can do is we can come down to the camera options, and I'm gonna turn on depth of field. Next, I like to just come down here and grab the aperture and just drag this up. So as you increase this, you'll start to see that you'll start to get a depth of field effect happening. So you can see the higher I drag this, 
the more out of focus the background's going to become. So you can mess around with that to get a nice setting that you're happy with. And I'm just gonna come back to my two view shot here and just show you something else to keep in mind. Now this thing here, this focus distance, if I move this, you can see this line moving here. Now essentially what that's doing is that's your focal plane. So this is telling the camera that this is the exact position that I want to be in focus or the exact point. So one thing we can do with this, if I drag this into the distance or to the next layer, I can actually move the focus from the foreground towards the background. So at the moment, the midground's in focus. So if you wanted to have it where the foreground was out of focus and the midground was in focus, you can do that. Now, something to keep in mind is that this focus distance needs to match up exactly with your layer that you want to be in focus for the sharpest results. So if I had it sitting in between two layers, for instance, both of these layers are gonna be quite soft and they're not gonna be sharp. So just keep that in mind. All right, so that's pretty much the effect done. Now, one other thing I did do is on mine, I added a foreground layer, which I just made up of a solid, and I just dragged that closer to the camera. And then I just got this image of a train and added that on top. And to actually animate the train, I created a position keyframe and an endpoint. So I essentially created two position keyframes and made the train move between those two keyframes so that it would roughly stay in the middle of the camera. So I really recommend messing around with that to see what other effects you can do. You can even create another foreground and then you can have a character walking along. You could have a video game. You could do whatever you want. Now here's another example of an image that I actually bought and I simply just did a little bit of Photoshop to split the layers up. I imported them using the same technique and then I layered them exactly the same way to create this same effect. So if you're looking for some inspiration, I really recommend getting on Google and just doing some quick image searches for landscapes to see what other people have designed and that might spark some ideas for things that you can create. So there you go guys, that's it from me and remember, Flatpak Effects is the Flatpak anyone can build.